What's going on, people? Ryan Williams AC here with your match preview. We are back. Premier League football is back. Arsenal take on Liverpool. If you're new to the channel, guys, please make sure you like, share, and subscribe. Of course, we're on the road to 150 subs. Let's get it. And of course, I want to hear from you guys in the comment section because I will be leaving a question and let me know your thoughts. Now, of course, before we get off and talk about the starting lineup and etc., I just want to extend my condolences to Claude's family. Of course, you know, we the untimely death of Claude, you know, it's uh, it's 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 tough. You know, just to see one of the Gruner brothers, you know, passing on this week was very upsetting, especially all online, you know, and all I want to say is, you know, he was a very good man. I used to love watching him on, you know, his channel and AFTV in the past as well. I've interacted with him just a few times on Twitter. It was nice to me as well. So I just want to, you know, just say rest in peace, Claude, and we'll miss you. Right. So let's slowly get into the match preview now. Arsenal taking on Liverpool. Big game, you know, big game. Of course, we're ninth, 42 points. Liverpool is seventh, sorry, or second, good Lord. <laughs> they ain't been second in a while. Anywho, <laughs> but yeah, yeah, listen, they're seventh. Um, they have 47 points and, you know, look, for me, I was a bit annoyed with the West Ham game, of course, I felt, we could have nicked it at the end. That's why I was a little bit more disappointed, as well as the way we started. And we cannot allow that to happen against Liverpool because they, as much as they've been struggling this season, they still have hitters at, up top. Let's not forget that. Let's not sleep, guys, all right? Jota, Salah, Mane, Firmino, when, when he's ready. You know what I mean? Like, we can't sleep, okay? We know defensively they have not been as epic or great as they've been in the last few seasons because maybe Van Dijk is unavailable, Gomez is unavailable, you know, uh, Matip's unavailable. I mean, they've signed, set, they signed a centre-back from Schalke. I can't pronounce his name, so I'm not going to butcher it. They've, we've seen the likes of uh, Fabinho. We've seen the likes of Henderson playing in that centre-back role. We've seen Alisson kind of all over the place in a few games as well. We need to take advantage of that, all right? We have our deficiencies and so do they, you know? This is why we're not really that far apart right now in the table. The league table does not lie. Uh, and I know we've made our mistakes and this is the thing. It needs to be like that Tottenham game where, you know, we need to be solid and we need to attack them and it needs to be efficient, okay? So we need to take the game to them. It's as simple as that. But be on our guard. Because three points is important. Like I said, I want to finish as high as we can. I know a lot of fans have written off the season. And yeah, I, I don't blame you. I don't blame you. You know what I mean? But we need to be finishing as high as we can this season. Because this season has been absolutely awful for us. So let's just get into the start of the 11, guys. Uh, in goal, Leno, do not mess up. All right, the goals conceded against West Ham, particularly the second and third goal, more so the second goal, oh, awful. How you get beaten in your near post like that, that cannot happen. I don't want to see that again, you know. But Leno in goal for me. The right back position, Cedric comes in. I know Chambers had a very good game against West Ham, but Chambers... Versus Mane, not for me. I think Cedric is a better defender than Callum Chambers. And even going forward, even though Chambers can be reliable at times. So for me, it's purely Cedric. Um, the centre backs, listen, if it's not broken, don't fix it. Gabriel, straight in there. I don't want to see. Um, a partnership between, you know, uh, David Louise or Rob Holden or Pablo Mari with Louise or Rob Holden and Mary. Like, I'm not seeing that. Gabriel is the best centre back that we have, 
And David Luiz right now has been on form for us. You know, yes, they uh, they conceded three goals, uh, Mary and Louise. But, I mean, when Gabriel and Louise are there, they, they seem to have a better understanding. So, if it's not broken, don't try and fix it. That's the partnership for me. And KT, left back, there's no questions asked with that. Um, of course, 4 2 3 1 is going to be our formation. So let's go into the midfield. Thomas Partey on one side, Granite Jack on the other. And we know Jack is going to be there, anyways. Um, you know, we did see him surprisingly get substituted um, against West Ham, funny enough. But I felt at that point, you know, Arteta needed to throw everything at West Ham because now he weren't going right in that midfield, if you ask me. So Jack Partey partnership. It needs to get. It needs to be sorted right there. The three in front. Now I know there's there's been some issues with Saka. Uh, apparently he was injured. That's why we didn't really see him feature in the England games. Or if he did, then you know my bad. I didn't notice. I, again, I'm not a really big fan of international football, but as far as I'm aware, Saka wasn't playing. So you know. We don't know what's going on with that. Apparently, he might be a little bit. He might have an injury. So, you know, as a precaution, I'm not going to use him. And that's going to kill me. You know, that's probably going to kill me. But if he's fit, then definitely he starts in the team. But, you know, if he's not fit, I'm going to give Pepe the ranks on the right-hand side. Him and Cedric, that's a good partnership. I know I've said in the past on the left, but there's a reason for that. And I'll get to that in a bit. So, Pepe for me comes on that right-hand side. Pepe, be on your best. You know, Liverpool, okay? Serious, serious, serious team, regardless of where they are in the league. Right now, we cannot be taking this for granted. It's as simple as that. All right. In the middle. Now, again, I heard Swift Rowe was injured too in the international duty. So, and I also heard this person I'm about to select, but I heard the injury wasn't that bad and it did happen a lot earlier compared to Mill Smith Rowe getting injured. So I'm going to pick um, Player of the Month who actually won it in Martin Odegaard. And it was well-deserved, in my personal opinion. Odegaard in a number 10 role. He's been fabulous since he's come in. Let's be real. He was just he's just doing everything that we needed earlier on in the season. And it kind of makes you wonder, why didn't we try and get Odegaard in the summer? But... You know, it doesn't matter. Now, he's here now. He's he's slowly starting to pull up trees. He's done very, very well in the last few games. And let's hope we can try to get this guy permanently or an extend his loan with an option to buy at the end of the season. I just want to see him here next season, regardless of what the situation is. You know, as long as we can keep him. That's that's just my personal opinion. But, of course, we'll talk about that in the summer and, you know, with all more news and speculation. On that left-hand side, now, this is the reason why I didn't put Pepe on the left. Because for me, it's not going to be a Bamiang. I'm sorry. It's not going to be a Bamiang on the left-hand side. A Bamiang is a striker. I've had enough seeing him on the left. Yes, I know he won the golden boot on the left-hand side. But I'm not having that no more. I'm sorry. Martinelli. Left-hand side. Okay. He has come in uh, in the last few games. West Ham. He did come on against Tottenham as well. And listen, this guy... Has a lot of energy. Um, he could definitely stretch out the defence. You know, he's a young prospect at Arsenal, of course. We all had our uh, annoyance with the fact that he won't get selected. Me, I've been kind of on the fence to it. You know, I said, oh, well, he's had a few injuries as well, so we kind of need to protect him. And then there's a part of me that's been like, well, he's been fit enough and ready to be on the bench. And then it's like, why am I not using him? But... We see them get a little bit more chances now. So, you know, for me, he has to start. He has to start, at least causing Trent some problems there. You know, he's going to be hard to chase, Martinelli. Trust me. Player for the future for Arsenal. And up top. Now, who do you pick? Because for me, Lacazette, you've started to step up now, you know. And, you know, there's a lot of rumours about what's going to happen in the summer, is he, is he going to be on his way out? I'm hearing contract extension. We don't know, you know, because the other day there was news about 
Arsenal contacted Aguero. So, you know, because he's leaving City at the end of the season. So, I don't know. Guys, let me know your thoughts on that in the comment section. I'd love to know your thoughts on that. But there's all rumours at the minute. And there's a Bamiyan, you know, he hasn't exactly done well this season. Of course, start of the season, he hasn't really been great. Of course, he had um, family issues as well. Since then, it's been a little bit up and down, and then it went down. And, of course, you know, lately, you know, he did well in qualifying for the African Cup of Nations with Gabon. You know, he got an assist and a goal out there as well. And he looks like he's in very much of a high spirits. And we know Arteta loves the man. He is the captain, you know, for Arsenal. So I think, personally, I think Aubameyang is probably going to start up top. You know? So that is my team. I'll go for it again. Leno in goal. Right back, Cedric. The centre back, Sid Louise and Gabriel. Left back, Kieran Tierney. In the middle of the two pivots is Xhaka and Partey. In the front three is Pepe, Odegaard and Martinelli. And up top, Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang. Scoreline prediction! It's going to be a toughie. It is going to be a toughie. Liverpool's front three, I mean, damn. Let's be honest, you know, Mane, Salah, they are frightening. Firmino, when he's available in terms of when he's there, he can, he can be very... Very skillful. Jota, we know, has been a life, a lifeline for them. Earlier on in the season, Jota, I mean, wow, what a player he is. You know what I mean? And then now he's just come back into it. I mean, we're going to have to watch out for him because we all remember what happened in the reverse fixture earlier on in the season when we, when we lost to Anfield. So I think this is going to be a tough one to call. It will be a tight one. I hope we come out victorious. My head is kind of saying 2-2 two, two draw. But my heart is saying there will be goals in this game. And I'm probably going to go 3-2 to the Arsenal. As much as I don't want to concede more than... I don't want to concede at all. But I know Liverpool's front three are, are dangerous. But again, like I said earlier in this video, their defence can be got at just as much as ours. But yeah, 3-2 to the Arsenal. Guys, let me know your thoughts in the comment section with your scoreline prediction and your team sheet. So, guys, I'm signing off here, and you guys will see me, obviously, after the game, with my actual reaction, of course. Thanks for checking out this video. Thanks for watching, of course, and uh, road to 150 subs by the end of April, guys. Let's get it. So, on that note, guys, have a lovely, lovely afternoon, and I'll be back with you guys soon. Peace.